So as I want to share again about one of the values that we have here at church is the exponential growth both personally and corporately. And as we keep our focus on God, as we keep our focus on Jesus and the cross and what has been done for us, we begin to understand more about him. We begin to learn more about him and we grow. And what we do is that grows on top of that and that grows on top of that. And that happens both personally in our own lives and as we share with others around in church and in our families, that happens corporately as well. And it is just amazing to be able to see the blessings that come from our obedience through that and the way that we learn and the way that we develop. So um, we're going to be looking this morning at guarding our hearts. And as we learn more about Jesus and getting, letting him show us how to protect our hearts and those sort of things. But this next part in our series of the best year. So listen in. so good to be able to share with you today and I'm so glad that you could be here with us whether you're in person or online today. Did you know that today is the second Sunday of 2022? We're already at the second Sunday. That means I don't know how many are left but it's going to be another quick year I'm sure. And if you were last week, you would have heard a bit about Pastor Ron introduced our new series, and you would have heard a bit more about how we can make 2022 the best year. This year can be the best year, just the same way as the past few years, any years in your life could have been the best year. Because this year is, again, another opportunity to make every single day a really good day. You can have the best day. And so last week, Pastor Ron started off this series by talking about controlling your thoughts and how it's important to be controlling our thoughts, being aware of what we put into our minds. Our minds are a very powerful place and we need to be careful of how we use them. Dr. Caroline Leaf says, whatever you feed, grows. And so if we feed our minds different lies or different things that cause us to dwell on things that will lead us to sin or make us feel bad, then we're causing our minds to feed on those things, causing those bad things to grow. If we're doing that, how do we expect to have the best year or the best day? So our minds control a lot, but today we're going to be talking about our hearts. And our minds and our hearts kind of connect together. They're, our minds and our hearts are part of each other, but our hearts are a bit more than that. They're also a powerful place. They make up who we are. They are our innermost self. And so we, how we listen to our heart and how we listen to our mind and what we fill those things with is a sure way to determine what kind of year we are going to have. So you can still have hard stuff happen in your life and be filled with joy. You can still have hard stuff happen in your life and look back and go, those things made me who I am today. And because of that, that could be, this could be the best year. So, are you ready or willing to have the best year this year? Would you like to have the best year this year? I've actually started off part of this year going through the Proverbs, and the Proverbs is this book of wisdom. And I think we all, I know that I need wisdom. Um, I think we all could ask God for wisdom each day, but it's in the Proverbs that talks about all sorts of things that help us in, well, the Bible talks about how to live. Um, but in the Proverbs, in Proverbs 4, verse 23, it says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today, guarding our hearts. And as we start, I want to make a kind of difference in the thought of guarding your heart. Sometimes when we think about guarding our hearts, we think of 
putting a guard up, putting a wall up and protecting ourselves from feeling different things or protecting ourselves from letting people know us. And while that can be helpful at times, I don't think that's what this proverb is talking about. I'm going to break the proverb down a little bit more, but to start off, I want to say that it's important to allow ourselves to respond and feel different things in a healthy way, because if we suppress that, that's all just going to explode at another time later and be even messier than it would have been if we just allowed ourselves to deal with that then and there. So when I'm talking about guarding our hearts, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is what the proverb says. And so I want to break it down back to the original language and look at what the Hebrew says about this verse. So it says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So guard. Guard means to guard and protect, to keep and watch over. Your heart, it's talking about your inner self, your mind and your will and your heart that makes who you are. Above all else, the next part of the verse, or some other versions, the King James Version says, with all diligence. So above all else, with all diligence, which means absolutely with everything you have, God protect it. And then the last bit, it determines the course of, or the King James Version says, from it flows the springs which means it's like going out, the source of going forth. So the thing that's the source of coming out and then life means life. So from this verse, we can see that the source of life or the going about of our life comes from our hearts, which is why it's so important to protect and guard it with our everything. What are we protecting and guarding it from? Why do we need to protect and guard our hearts, our ourselves. I wanted to read the proverb with a little bit more context, starting from verse 20, Proverbs 4, starting in verse 20. It says, my child, pay attention to what I say and listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. We'll finish there. And so in verse 23, it's telling us to guard our heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. And the verses before that say, let God's words go deep into your heart. So if we want to make this year the best year, I think it's important for us to start by looking what is in our hearts. What's going on in your heart? Do you know where your heart is today. So I want to start with, I guess, a challenge for you to personally examine your heart. Have you ever taken time to just look and reflect and examine your heart to know what is in your heart? I think one of the best ways to do this is to recognize your natural response to things. What comes out of your mouth is from your heart. Jesus talks about this in Luke chapter 6 in verse 43. He says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruits Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. So what you say flows from your heart. What you say flows from your heart. So I have a question. What is flowing from your heart? 
What are the th things that you talk about? How are you talking with people? Can you see a difference in the way you're responding to things now as opposed to this time last year? Where is your heart at? Or what about this? What is your natural response to when you're driving somewhere and somebody keeps slowing down, speeding up, when you get to the overtaking lanes, they decide to speed up when you wanted to overtake them? What is your response when that kind of thing happens? If you start to say words that you wouldn't normally say, where's your heart at? Is that flowing? That's what's flowing from your heart. Or what's your natural response when something out of your control happens? Is it we just throw our hands in the air, start to say things, and then all of a sudden we're like, oh, I wouldn't normally say that kind of thing? Does it depend who we are with? Does it depend who we are around? What we say flows from our hearts. And so a lot of the time we might have a kind and loving heart. We might be loving people and living out how God calls us to live. But the thing is our hearts can deceive us. And then all of a sudden we might hear something just come out of our mouth and we're like, whoa, where did that come from? I don't usually say that kind of thing. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who knows really how bad it is? The Hebrew for the word deceit means well deceitful, sly, crooked, slippery. So do we really know our hearts? If our heart is something that can be so sly and deceitful and slippery, do we know ourselves? And so we, we know ourselves more than anyone else in this room would know ourselves because we know what's in our mind. Like, you know the thoughts that you're thinking right now. I don't know what you're thinking right now, but God does. And the thing is, God knows us more than we know ourselves. God knows what's in our hearts more than we know what's in our hearts. He knows everything about us. And I am so thankful that he knows my heart because he's also the one that wants to protect it. He knows your heart and is the one that wants to protect it. And so another challenge I have for us is asking God to examine our hearts. So God is examining our hearts. God does examine our hearts. In Jeremiah 17, 10, the next verse says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to, their act to what their actions deserve. He knows our hearts. He knows why we do what we do, even if we aren't quite sure why we're doing something. God knows. And so we can ask God to help us in the examination of our hearts. It's so important to ask God to reveal to us those things that we need to deal with, because when we ask him, he will help us. The thing is, it can be really hard to guard our hearts. It can be easy to just get caught up in the things that are going on around us. We can allow just the things in this world, the things that even what you read this morning to impact our hearts without even realizing it. And so a big part of guarding our hearts and what is impacting our hearts is what Pastor Ron talked about last week in controlling your thoughts. Guarding our hearts comes with guarding our minds. And so with that being said, if we allow our minds and our eyes and our ears to see and listen to things that are not helpful or praiseworthy or lovely, then we're not guarding our hearts. If we're filling our minds with those things that lead us to fear or to lust or to hate or ungodly things, we're no longer protecting or guarding our hearts, but we're actually allowing our hearts to see things that can deceive us. And so instead, we need to fill our hearts and our minds 
with the things that Philippians 4.8 says. And Pastor Ron shared this verse with us last week. It says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. If you were here last week or listened to the message last week, how have you gone with that this the past week? How did we go with filling our minds? We heard this verse. How did we go with filling, fixing our thoughts and our minds on what is true and honorable and right, admirable, lovely, worthy of praise? Something that I want to challenge us in, and this can be really hard to do. It's when you fix your mind on that thing. And so it can be really hard to do even just with looking at the news. You look at the news and automatically we see things that are not excellent and that are not lovely or right. And if we fix our minds on those things, we need to be really careful not to do that, but allow our minds to be not caught up in those things, but to be focused on Jesus, just as Jonathan was saying before. Proverbs chapter three, starting in verse one says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. So if we want to have the best year, we need to start guarding our hearts. We need to start allowing his word to go deep within our innermost self so that no matter what happens, no matter what news article you read or what restriction comes up next or whatever else happens in your life, our natural response will flow from our heart and it will be one that honors God. It will be one that speaks his truth. This is something that's so important and I think that as Christians we know that we need to be reading the Bible and we know that we need to be praying because they're good things to do but that's not the purpose of reading the Bible or prayer. That's not why we tell people to read the Bible or to pray because they're good things. But we encourage each other to read the word and to pray because it will help us to have these things stored in our hearts. We will have the truth of God stored in our heart and we will have that relationship with Jesus. See, it's not about living the right kind of life or being that good person. It's about being in relationship with Jesus. Living a right kind of life isn't sustainable because we're trying to do that in our own strength. We're trying to do the good things or say the right things, be the right person. But it's not sustainable because it's not going to be coming from our hearts then. If our hearts are our innermost self and we're just doing things to be a good person, it's not going to be sustainable. But what is sustainable is when it does come from our heart when we have that heart change because we want to be in relationship with Jesus and that changes everything. When we're living in relationship with Jesus, we aren't just reading the Bible. We're spending time with his word, allowing it to soak into our hearts, allowing him to speak to our minds, to guide us and reveal to us his truth. We aren't just praying or talking. We are talking with our savior. We are interceding on the lives and the world around us, joining God where he is. We aren't just singing songs. We are declaring how wonderful and awesome our God, our creator, our savior is and joining in worship just as they worship in heaven, although I'm sure that's so much better. We aren't just 
coming to church. We're meeting together with God's people, with our family to be encouraged and to build each other up. Jesus changes everything and he, changed, he is the one that changes our hearts. He is the one that changes our innermost self. But the thing is, sometimes we don't always feel like reading our Bible, even though we do want to and we have that changed heart, or we might not always feel like meeting with our Bible study group or other things that pop up in life that we know we should be doing or that we actually do want to do, but we just don't feel like going that day. And there is a reason for that. There is a battle for our hearts. So we may not see it, but there is a very real spiritual battle going on for our hearts, and it's going on all around us. John 10.10 10 says that the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. We need to guard our hearts because the thief's purpose or the enemy's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal our joy and kill our joy, our relationships, our faith, the church. And he can even use our hearts to start to do that. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10, says a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies, all the strategies of the devil. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. There is a real battle going on, and the enemy... The devil is working hard with strategies against you. He wants to fill your heart with discouragement and lies. He wants to distract you. He wants to make you tired. He wants to confuse you. He wants to destroy you. And if he can get to your heart, and if he can slither your way in, then he wants to start to open up all sorts of things. And it starts off with that slight glance or that temptation. It starts off by reading an article and then dwelling too much on it. This is why it's so important for us to guard our hearts. So that when the enemy tries to slip past us, we have our hearts protected. We are protecting our innermost self. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. And remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Stand firm. We're not alone in this. Believers all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering. So stand firm. Guard your heart. Fill your heart with God's word, with his truth. And while it is the enemy's purpose to steal, kill, and destroy us, John 10.10 10 also says, well, Jesus says, that my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Or other versions say that I've come to give them life and life to the fullest. So we do have a real enemy out there that's working hard with strategies to get at us, but we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to bow into that because we have Jesus who has come to give us life to the fullest. And so we can rejoice in that. We can stay close to God and be close to him and have our hearts guarded and protected. So I'm not trying to make you fearful. Don't, you don't have to fear, but what you do need to do is guard your heart. Be close to God. Some of you might already be starting to feel the busyness of life starting to happen 
or you're aware that it's already starting to get busy again, things are going to start happening, but even in that, we can stand firm. We don't have to allow busyness or productivity to distract us from guarding our hearts. It's not bad to have things happening in your life. It's good to be productive and having things going on, but we don't have to allow that to distract us from guarding our hearts. So in your work or with your family or whatever you have going on, do those things that you're called to do and have your heart guarded, standing firm. How do we do that? Ephesians 6, continuing on, tells us how to do that. Verse 13 says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Stand firm. Put on the armor of God. So as we go into this year, I really want to encourage you to examine your heart. Ask God to help you examine your heart, to reveal things in your heart, to ask him to help you deal with those things so that you can grow closer to him, so that you can guard your heart the best way that you can. Start to fill our hearts with his truth. Only listen to things that will protect you and fill your minds with him. And I know that that's not always easy or possible, depending on where you work. Sometimes that's entirely impossible because there's things that are just going to be in the background, filling your minds with things that you don't want there. Even in that, we can guard our hearts and we can be asking God to protect our hearts from allowing those things that we don't have control over to come in to our hearts and surround ourselves with the things of God as best that we can. Deuteronomy 6 says this in reference to God's commands and word. In verse 7, it says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. Surround yourselves in God's word, his commands. Talk about it all the time. It's not always easy because there is a battle for our hearts, but we don't have to be discouraged. This can be part, this is a huge part of guarding our hearts. John 16:33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus has already done everything we need to live life to the fullest. And again, it starts with relationship with him. That relationship with Jesus changes everything. Because no longer are we just doing it to do it, but we're following him because we want to. We're surrounding our lives with his word and his truth because we want to. We want to guard our hearts. We want to follow him and be protected with him and be living in him. And when we do that, no matter what happens this year, we can have the best year because of Jesus. You may have already had some hard things happen in your life and it's the ninth day of the year. You may have already had some struggles or you may have already had some discouragements. 
And I know for me, as I look back on the past two years, I already know that by this time two years ago, I'd already had a big struggle. And as I look back over the last two years, and as you look back over the last two years, there may have been lots of different confusion or pain, and I know for me it was filled with hard things, many tears, lots of challenges. Things that when I look, when I look back on, I didn't want to face those things ever in my life. But I can look back with joy, I can look back with love, I can look back with thankfulness. And I know that even if the worst things happen this year, even if we have a repeat of what's gone on in the last two years, or they're a little bit different, I know that we can have the best year, because the best year is not about how successful you are. The best year is not about how much money you can make. The best year is made up of lots of small choices to guard your heart, to control your thoughts, to stand firm on the word of truth, to choose Jesus in all things, keeping our eyes fixed on the cross. Because the best years and the best times that we have are with Jesus, no matter what happens. So are you ready to have the best year, no matter what happens? Are you prepared to do the things necessary to have the best year, no matter what happens? Are you ready to guard your heart? Are you willing to guard your heart to put things in place so that when hard things happen, Jesus told us we will have trials. When those things happen, our natural response is to bring honor and glory to him. Jesus is always at work, working through all things. And we can join with him and trust that he can give us the best year. But it's always up to us. Are we willing and ready? have the best year, no matter what happens. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you so much that you have gone before us. As we look at the world around us right now, it's, it can be easy to just get caught up in frustration and the division and the fear and just all of this other stuff. Lord, help us to be wise. Help us to guard our hearts, to fill our hearts with your truth. To be able to know what is going on in the world around us, but know that you are above all things, that your way is the best way. Lord, I pray for each person listening today, in person or online, that we would be people who choose you. May we be people who surround ourselves with your word, putting it up in our homes, in our cars, wherever we can, that we would be surrounded by you. That we would not be afraid to do that if people would look at us differently. Lord, that we would be honored to do that. Father, for those who are struggling right now, I lift them before you and ask that you would hold their hearts, that they would turn to you, ask you for help, and for each one of us, may you help us to examine our hearts, that we'd be able to understand what you are calling us to stop, to leave behind, to cut off, and what you're calling us to seek, and we know that we can find that all in your word. Help us to have understanding. Open up our minds so we can understand your word of truth, Lord. And that each day we would be able to make it the best day because it's been a day with you. And so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.